And welcome back to the North Star Takes Podcast with Bailey Palicki and Jacob Liberta. You can find all our videos here on our channel, so feel free to give us a follow on both Twitter and Instagram and hit that subscribe button as well. Today we'll be bringing up Vikings training camp notes that have been happening throughout the week here. They've been in training camp about a week now. All sorts of controversy going on with this team. Uh, everyone's aware of the whole vaccination status of the team. Lowest vaccination rate in the league. Um, everyone from ownership on down to Zimmer is pretty concerned within the organization that this is going to end up costing us at some point throughout the season if these guys don't get vaccinated. Mm-hmm. Fans are obviously concerned, and not a lot of fans aren't too happy with some of the key players that aren't vaccinated as well. So obviously that's a huge concern, and we don't have to dig too much into it because we know how controversial of a topic it is. But uh, just off the top of your head, of course it has to be the Minnesota Vikings that are in this spot. Oh, the Vikings, whether it's good or bad, they're always interesting. And yes. I know, especially when you go check out Adam Thielen, all his recent social media posts, really doesn't matter what platform he's on. Like yeah. Everything he posts doesn't matter what topic it's even on. Everybody responds and is like, get vexed. So, I mean, mm-hmm. that's, I feel like that's all you need to know about this fan base and how they feel about the Vikings winning games this year. And how important these guys are that yes. aren't are known to not be vexed if they were to miss games, how much that could hurt, potentially hurt this team. But I think – First and foremost, it lies on the uh, shoulders of Kirk Cousins. I mean, this would happen that he'd have a polarizing stance on, yeah. on something like the, even the vaccine. Like, he's already polarizing enough the way it is with his play and his right. contract yeah. and everything else. Like, yeah. might as well just throw more fuel in the fire. So, that's kind of where I stand with it. But Yeah, I agree with you. Obviously, quarterback is the most <clears> important <throat> position on the team. If a guy like Adam Thielen or Harrison Smith, since they've confirmed that they're not vaccinated, mm-hmm. if one of those guys had to miss a game or two, it wouldn't be the absolute end of the world. No. You could almost treat it like an injury. But if Kirk Cousins has to miss a game here or there, especially if it's in a big-time game, maybe against the Packers or a primetime game, mm-hmm. that's massive for this team because then it's a step down to Jake Browning, who has been great in practices, but it's training camp, it's practice. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Kellen Mond, you have no idea what you're getting from him yet, so... If Kirk Cousins has to miss a game or two, I would almost guarantee that the Vikings lose those games. It'd be a backbreaker, honestly. And you, you just think about it, it would depend on the opponent, too. I think I'd like to think we could plug in a lot of different quarterbacks into a situation if we're playing a weak team or still win, no matter like who's back there because the yeah. team is just bad enough for playing. But at the same time, like you said, if like all the chips are on the table, especially if this is like a late season game, like we we talked about this a couple months ago with our, yeah. that last four game stretch there against was it the Bears and the Rams and the Packers and the Bears again, yep. like well that'd be catastrophic if Kirk were to miss one of those games and like our playoff hopes really like hinged on that. So mm-hmm. that's that's a little bit concerning, just like. It's being echoed with ownership. I mean, Rick, Mike, and everybody involved. So Yeah, and I don't blame Mike Zimmer one bit for being upset. Obviously, his job is on the line this season. If they don't perform well, if they don't make the playoffs, even if they don't really make a run in the playoffs, I think he could be gone. So, mm. And like we've talked about, this roster appears to be very good. They appear to be set to compete in the NFC. Mm-hmm. And so to have something like that when it's, you know, it's the player's choice to get vaccinated or not and to – have it come down to something like that rather than an injury, which you can't control, would be obviously very disappointing. But uh, we'll kind of get into some of the highlights of training camp so far. The big story, um, Daniel Hunter is back, looking absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, he looks like a, his old self, according to reports and that's, videos that have been out on social media. So massive. And then uh, recently here, Jake Browning just kind of popping off in practice. He's looked really good with the first team, apparently, with Kirk Cousins being out the last several days. Um, K.J. Osborne has kind of risen out of nowhere to be the favorite, to be the wide receiver three, which I don't know if anyone expected him to make the roster after how poor of a returner he was last year. Mm -hmm. He offered absolutely nothing at the receiver position. I don't think he ever took a snap at receiver in the regular season. So those are just kind of some of the interesting storylines coming out of camp so far here. So I guess which one of those catches your eye right away? Boy, that that's a lot of a lot of juice, even like vaccinations aside. Like yeah. as far as I feel like we need to recognize the on field talent, like this is what training camp's for, is for guys to emerge and kinda break out and maybe you have a guy like Hunter coming off an injury return to form, that's huge. But I feel like that's that's mostly I feel like it's too bad this vaccination story is taken away from things like that. Yeah. But yep. as as far as like most surprising or most intriguing, I guess, is I feel like it's definitely gotta be KJ Osborne. Just because 
like you said, I mean, I don't even think he was a guarantee to make this team, let alone yeah. now people are talking about him as wide receiver three. So well, I think that's huge. Sure is, that's that's awesome. You've been that much development in the off season and like OTAs and uh, mini camp and things like that. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that's awesome. If he can seriously actually beat out D.D. Westbrook or wide receiver three, that's great. It means we have probably four good receivers at least. Yeah. So I think that's huge. And I'm happy for him because I know he was pretty heavily criticized at the end of last season yes, for his was. return game because our special teams are just abysmal. So mm-hmm. I think – that's awesome that KJ Osborne's taking steps forward and uh, been rewarding the team for sticking with him into a second season. So yeah, and I would say it's super encouraging that the Neil Hunter's looking like his old self. Yeah, no one really would know. No one really knew how he'd come back from that neck injury. Mm-hmm. Also related to the defensive end position, apparently DJ Wanham's been fantastic as well. He's looked like he's improved a lot. They've been kind of moving him around from defensive end to like a stand up linebacker position. Really. So it's, it'll be kind of interesting to see maybe if they kind of tweak their defense a little bit or try some different formations out, kind of throw a different look at some of these teams. But Mm -hmm. if he's a versatile player like that, I think he could end up being an extremely good player for us. And that's a fourth round pick. KJ Osborne was a fifth round pick. Rick is usually pretty good at identifying these mid to late round guys that are totally agree that can be contributors. Now, Jeff Gladney recently cut after his indictment with his, uh, uh, criminal investigation going on. So that's a first round pick. Once again, that doesn't turn out. So, the Vikings track record in the first round hasn't looked so good lately, mm-hmm. but I think when you can draft and develop guys in these mid to late rounds, that helps e- ease that burden quite a bit. I totally agree. I feel like that sets yourself apart from the rest of the pack. Like I know, I think everybody misses on first round picks, but if you can really, like every now and then, obviously you got hit on hopefully more than you miss on, but the thing is when it gets in the later rounds, I feel like that's when the good GMs set themselves apart from just your average run of the mill For GM. Sure. So that's why I really like Rick, and that's why I think even – I feel like the season a lot, like, I mean, a lot would have to go wrong for Rick to get fired. Mm-hmm. And I really like that because I, I, I trust Rick as the GM. And I, I see a lot of poor decisions being made across the league by other general managers and other teams. And yep. that just concerns me because it's like you never know who the next Yahoo we'd bring in yeah. and to run this team. So that that kind of scares me, the unknown. But that's that's why I like Rick and, like you said, all these good late-round picks. At least it seems that way. But mm-hmm. uh, kind of going back to Wanham here real quick, yeah. I think we had to temper expectations just a little bit because sure, yeah. I, I think the most important thing to take away from these good reps at training camp is also – He's going up against his backup lineman. I feel like that's that is that's, true. That's another story to talk about from training camp. Is uh, our offensive lines kind of been mismatched all over the place ever Not since at they full got strength, there? That's for sure. Yeah, so that's that's a little scary, and I know that's always a hot topic for the Vikings. So mm-hmm. I mean, that might make Wanham look a little bit better, but I mean, let's hope he's still taking steps forward anyway. Like we were talking about with Osborne. Yeah, you brought up the offensive line. Darisad finally practiced for the first time today mm-hmm. on Wednesday. Um, Wyatt Davis was out for a couple practices. He's back now. Good. It appears that Dakota Dozier is just holding on to that starting right guard spot, and they're kind of mixing Ole Udo in there. It'll be interesting to see what ends up happening within the next month here. Hopefully Wyatt Davis can kind of just come in and take control of that uh, battle, and hopefully they give him a fair shot, honestly. Mm-hmm. And I think with Derisad, now he's coming back. He's the first-round pick. I think as long as he stays healthy – and he plays okay in these preseason games, I think he's going to be the starting left tackle week one. Yeah, I totally agree. I don't see why he wouldn't be. I mean, that's usually when you when you take offensive linemen in the first round, you usually anticipate them being a plug-and-play guy. So yep. I think that's imperative that Darius our left tackle. Like, I think we can live without him for a game or two if you have guys like Rashad Hill or Ole Udo. Like, I can – I could probably get by with that for a couple games, but obviously yeah. not for a whole season. So I want Darius to play as early as possible so then he really gets up to speed with the NFL game. Because I know you can't expect a ton out of rookie offensive linemen because no. it's it's a pretty big adjustment from the college game. So I, I think it's, the sooner you can get in the fold, the better. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about him. Obviously, for strong picks, you're always excited about. But yep. I also think, I come back to Dakota Doji real quick, I – Boy, I do not want to see that. I don't want that guy to see the field this year. Probably, not. I don't even really want to make a roster, but I can live with him making the roster if he's not going to be on that starting five yeah. on the offensive line come week one in Cincy. So I think that's the biggest thing for me. But that's that's I really don't like that when we're a week into training camp and we got freaking Dakota Dozier. Yeah, I think they just put him there to kind of set the precedent and say, okay, you have to prove that you can beat this guy. Mm-hmm. I think they will eventually. There's a long time to go here. Mm-hmm. Um, Dakota Dozier's gotten worse every year he's been here. He's been here for a few years now. So yeah. I I just can't see how they would even fathom giving him a starting spot. So I know, right? last kind of note here is Justin Jefferson looks even better than he did last year, which is kind of incredible to say. I don't know how you can get, it, get even better. I don't either. And then Adam Thielen's still looking good. He's not showing his age at all. So I think the receiver group is going to be very intriguing this season. And uh, hopefully it gives Kirk some 
good options to throw to here and makes the offense more versatile. Oh, yeah, 100%. I love to see our two top guys, the receivers, just thriving because I think that's huge to this offense, obviously, and our yeah. success because if they're not good, then Kirk's not be good. If Kirk's not good, man, we're screwed. Like, we're, we're absolutely we're, screwed. We're dead in the water. So I think that's huge that Thielen doesn't seem to be turning a corner and that Jefferson somehow was getting better even though – like, if he just matched what he did last season, that'd be good enough for me and good enough for everybody, I think. Because, yeah. like, 1,400 yards, something to scoff at, especially when he didn't really play the first two games. So, mm -hmm. I think people might forget that sometimes. So, I never know what, what's in store for year two, I wonder. But yep. I, I think the only thing you could probably say is if he get in the end zone a bit more. But, uh, I mean, if the one scoring, would he have 14 touchdowns last year or yeah. something? But, like, it doesn't really matter. So, I don't really work. <laughs> don't really care where it comes from. Unless, like, I want him on my fantasy team, of course. True, but, yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> So, yeah, we'll have to kind of see how that goes. We're going to be heading out to training camp here within the next couple of days, so we'll mm -hmm. get a look at it for ourselves and get back to you guys with what we see. So that's going to do it for this edition of the North Star Takes podcast. Be sure to like our videos and stay tuned by subscribing for more content. And give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram as well, and be sure to spread the word to your sports-loving friends about this channel as well. We, we've really appreciated all the support we've gotten recently. So thanks for watching.